So Tony Moran has apologized in a Tony Moran sort of way. Hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. Now, that's not a slight towards Tony. I'm not suggesting it's not genuine. I'm not in his head. I don't know. All I mean is, is that when you read the apology, you can definitely hear Tony in his apology. We're going to read it together. We're going to jump over to the other screen here in a moment, and we're going to read it together. It's from his Facebook page. I don't follow him on Facebook, but I, but that's where I found it. And uh, and I'll give you my thoughts on it after we're done going through it. Now, it is it isn't exactly grammatically correct. There's a few run on sentences. There's a few, so it, it might take us a little bit to get through. I'm going to do the best I can. Uh, so be patient. Bear with me. Um, and then there's other things I want to talk about as well in relation to that. And hopefully we can finally put this thing to bed because this is not the second video I've done on this. This is actually the third video I've done on Tony Moran. The very first one was four years or so ago. So this is not new to me in this kind of thing. Uh, and I do know people that have direct, I don't say contact, but had, uh, let's just say that I have direct knowledge of certain things you don't. Um, that being said, uh, before we jump into the apology, let me also say this. <laughs> people love their drama drama this is like the second video i've done on this in a week and uh you know but i don't usually do drama videos on this channel so and it's not like i'm creating the drama i'm just covering what's already there you know and it's halloween so you know um i'm allowed one or two on my channel every so often so let me just say this since the last video i uploaded on this that now has as of shooting this about seventeen thousand views it's people love their drama <laughs> um I received quite a few messages from people saying to me, Dave, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what that fucking article is talking about. I don't know what that video is showing me, but all I know is my experience with Tony was amazing. He was cordial. He was polite. He was cool. He was awesome. Getting photos taken and fucking autographs and he was giving free autographs to like, you know, the military and he was fucking doing this and this and bouncing babies on his leg and kissing babies and running for Congress. And I don't know, fucking you name it. He was amazing. He was amazing. <laughs> um, I don't doubt that's true. I don't doubt that's true. And I don't want to say that your experience with him is not true or was not real and genuine in that moment. It may very well have been, and that was your experience with him. But I think it's important we understand that both things can coexist at the same time. You know, Kevin Spacey can be a, you know, a scuzz sucking piece of shit and an incredible actor. Bill Cosby can be a hilarious comedian and have a great sitcom in the 80s and be this successful actor and do wonderful things for, you know, um, charities and um, black youth and, 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 you know, all this kind of stuff and be a prolific serial rapist. I mean, you know, like both things can coexist. It's not, and again, I'm not suggesting that Tony is like that. I'm going to the extreme to make a point. Okay, follow me. It's not unprecedented. The point I'm making is, is that what you see isn't always what is reality. All right. So both things can coexist at the same time. You could have a wonderful experience with Tony because he's having a good day. You know, uh, he's not, maybe it's a smaller, more intimate convention. So he doesn't feel any pressure and he's, you know, he's kind of chill and laid back. Maybe he just smoked a fucking joint. You know what I mean? There, there's so many different variables or he's having a good day. And then the next day, he's a fucking dick to a lot of people. I mean, both things can be true at the same time. So I'm just saying, let's 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 remember that. But if you had a good if you had a good experience with him, that's amazing. Cherish it, cherish it. Okay, let's jump over to the uh, the apology, and let's see if we can get through this as quickly as we can. Because, like I said, it's 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 not exactly grammatically correct. So we're gonna do the best we can here. Uh, oops, here we go. All right. First, foremost, and most importantly for this post, is that I wanted to sincerely and deeply apologize for certain language I used that is contained in a video montage that was made of me. I will not explain the context, nor give reasons or excuses. The certain language I used, simply on its own, even without context, is deplorable and disgusting. Now, I would assume he's talking about the F word in regards to the derogatory term for someone who's gay and cocksucker. That's what I'm assuming. That, that, as far as I know, that was the most deplorable thing I heard him say in relation to other people. 
I don't recall anything else. So, okay. All right. Um, I am deeply ashamed of it and I always will be. I am very sorry for offending people with it and hope at some point I'll be forgiven. But I truly would understand if some people never do. Again, this is the number one reason for this post. I have a much lesser issue that I am going to address, so I appreciate your patience, and it's for the fans of Halloween that don't know me and have never met me. The people that have met me know me, friends with me. Maybe he means friends out, friends of me, maybe. Uh, don't have a need for me to explain, or friends with me, I think I know what he's talking about. Don't have a need for me to explain the video clips in this montage. They know it's ridiculous and childish. The editing is pretty is pretty choppy, but impressive in the sense of how much time and energy this must have taken because I know what I say in interviews and convention Q&As with fans present, but I want to clear some things up for you guys that don't know me. It actually is not that hard to put something like that together, especially when there's so much material out there. It would be harder if there if there were hardly any, you know, interviews or footage of Tony. But there's so much footage of Tony that it actually I mean that could have been done in an afternoon. Seriously. Uh all right. My main problem with this National Enquirer quote unquote, or, or any other gossip rag type of post is not really about defending myself because it's so easy to find interviews of me, like I just said, and you would see that I say almost the exact same thing in all of them. The truth. Okay, we're now we're, we're going to talk about that soon. Uh, no, this is about fans of Halloween that may uh, now have a bad taste in their mouth or feel tainted by this montage. My loyalty is to the fans, whether I know them or not, and I will always defend them. Without you fans, the movie doesn't become what it became. That's true. Simple as that. I'll explain a couple things. First, and he, he goes on here to say things we've already heard him say, but nonetheless, I will read it. First, back in 1978, when I was 21 years old, I did think Halloween was going to be stupid and a piece of crap. Absolutely. I was actually ashamed of doing it at the time, and only my best friend and girlfriend knew about it at that time. I figured a week or two in the drive-in and it would be gone. You see, back in 1978, it wasn't like it is today. That's true. Back then, an inexpensive indie horror film was almost at the bottom of the barrel for an actor. It was only slightly above soft porn and then hardcore porn. There's a bit of truth to what he's saying there. Back in 1978, pretty much the only way to see nudity was in horror films and porn. Again, a bit of truth in there. Now, because of this, now because of this, directors and producers wouldn't want to hire you because they felt you sold out and didn't respect your craft. It could turn out to be a death sentence. Again, there's a, there's a lot of variables. Like there's truth to what he's saying, but it's also not as black and white as to what he's saying. So again, there's yes, but there's 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 many different variables there as well. Not it, it it's 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 too generalized of a statement that he's making, but there is truth within that generalized statement. But th there's more context around that as well. Uh, it could turn out to be the de it could turn out to be the death sentence. Here's the other thing. I'm pretty sure Halloween was the first horror movie that involved a mask. No, it wasn't the first horror movie that involved a mask. Uh, I mean, in that way, perhaps, I don't know, but certainly there are, have been other films that have, that have had masks. Um, I didn't know about having to wear one until after I signed the contract and showed up on set. I was mortified, but I was also broke as a joke, so I did it. I was also invited to go to a screening for the cast and crew, and guess what? Yep. I threw the invitation in the mail and didn't go, like an asshole. I tell this part of the story and a lot more, and the rest of the story basically revolves around me being self-deprecating and making fun of myself, uh, which is true. We, we do see him do that from time to time. You'll have to watch uh, or hear my full interviews to truly understand this and the truth. I am truly humbled by my fans, always have and always will be. You see, I didn't get lucky or fortunate, etc. I got completely blessed. There is no other word that truly fits how I feel. This is why it's so humbling for me. But but no one I have met, excuse me, I read that wrong. Bar none, I have met the best, most genuine and unselfish people through horror cons. So getting back to my point about defending fans. The person that I truly believe did this montage obviously doesn't have all of you fans in the best interest. If this person did, why go to the extreme efforts to lie to you? It will only be found out sooner or later. I always, I also understand this person's cowardness. 
uh, cowardliness, excuse me, not to identify themselves. The person uh, would be exposed as a blatant liar and lose credibility, etc. This person has an all-encompassing and consuming obsession with me and has for years and couldn't help but put themselves in one of the video clips. Interesting. I wonder who they're talking about or I wonder who he's talking about. <laughs> uh, I used to get angry, but for a few years now, I simply find it sad and pathetic. Because of the ending, if people want to choose to believe excuse me, because of the editing, excuse me, if people want to choose to believe it, that's okay with me. People are going to do what they want to do or believe even if there's facts to disprove it. Uh, there's people that judge all the time without facts. I can't change that and I'm not going to try to shove it down people's throats uh, to try to convince them like this video montage is trying to do. As they say, haters are going to hate no matter what that's a true saying, <laughs> no doubt about it. It's their choice. That's how they want to live. Like I said earlier, this is not for me. This is for the people and fans that don't know me and are hurt, angry, etc. Because you're a fan of Halloween. I will always protect that. John Carpenter is a genius. He did call him a genius. Uh, he called him other things too, but he, he did call him a genius. <laughs> and he changed the whole landscape and I'm blessed to have been a part of it. That's right, Tony, a part of it. We'll talk about that in a minute. This person I believe that did this is also using an 18-year-old to help him mainly through Instagram, actually taking advantage of an 18-year-old. Again, he's making accusations. I don't know about this shit. I have no idea what he's talking about here. This kid is posing as my fan uh, as my fan page, which is not a fan page at all. I met this kid and even signed an autograph for him at a convention recently. It's despicable and really weird because of the obsession. Anyways, uh, thank you guys for taking the time to read all of this, and I hope this has helped some of you out there that had problems with it take care and of course many of his supporters coming to his his support there as well uh let me just jump over here for a minute before i go to the other screen so there's the apology from tony moran what do you think well here's the thing so there's several ways to look at this i'm looking at this apology through a bit of a different lens than what you're looking at it through Unless you are in a position where you're able to look at it through the same lens that I am. And what I mean by that, again, is that I, I, I know certain people and I've spoken to certain people that, that, have, that have direct, have and have had direct, unique um, uh, contact and experiences with Tony. Uh, I've spoken to these people for a, a long time about it. So I read this apology from a bit of a different point of view. Uh, and again, you might be in the same position. I don't know. But I think most people watching this video will be in a position where they're taking it at face value, right? So there's a lot of information that I have and a lot of the things that I know Tony has done and said about certain people that I'm like, okay. I mean, this is a very fan-centric apology, as it should be. Right. I mean, this is, you know, he's apologizing to the hand that feeds him. I mean, it makes sense. He even says right off the bat, he's like, you know, I said this and I said that, but the context of that doesn't matter. I want to focus on the fans. Right. So there's no apology to Tyler Maine. He's apologizing for using the language that he's using, but he doesn't apologize to Tyler Maine. He doesn't apologize to John Carpenter for accusing him of being a, you know, woman beater without evidence. He doesn't apologize to Jamie Lee Curtis for calling her a whore for fucking everybody on set without evidence. And again, like I said in the previous video, did that happen? <laughs> Maybe it did. I wasn't there. You weren't there. Maybe it did. But there's no evidence for it. And evidence is extremely important. I mean, this is, you know, it's the first time we're hearing this. And I would, I would think that was something like that uh, in the 40, what, three years it's been that, you know, some thing like that probably would have come out somewhere, you know? And he just, you know, just says it like he's eating a sandwich. I mean, you know, what the hell is he talking about, right? No apology for that. He's apologizing to the fans for the fan angle. Uh, and it was edited to make him look bad. I even said that in, in the previous video. I, I did say that, that it, it is edited, um, you know, so to keep that in mind. But there's enough video of Tony and his antics out there that, you know, you don't necessarily have to watch the edited version either. So, you know, I, 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 I mean, 
is this going to change Tony? No, I don't think so. And the reason why I don't think so is because, again, Tony has... And listen, I know I know this is going to sound like I'm beating a dead horse here, but sometimes you got to go back to the root of the problem to fix what's going on up here. It's like when you're writing a screenplay. For you screenplay writers out there or novelists, when you get writer's block and you're writing and you're writing and you're trying to figure out a scene, oh, fuck, God, it's not working. I, I fucked up here. What's going on? Nine times out of 10, go back a couple of pages and try to rework some, Try to rework something back there because nine times out of 10, the problem isn't directly with the scene that you're working on on that page. The problem is a couple of pages back, right? So Tony's problems and issues are not going to go away because he just apologized to the fans about how that video made him look. Tony's problem, in my estimation, has always been that he never owned his role. That was the title of the video, the very first video I did on this four years ago, in 2017. Was that he never owned his role. He never fully bought into it because I think he was embarrassed. I believe him when he says, As I was on screen with Lisa, why am I fucking, I'm fucking, you're a loser, dude. I believe he was thinking that, 100%. Because he couldn't, he couldn't understand why. He didn't understand it. Now, of course, over the last 15 years or so, he probably understands it a bit better, you know, um, but he's never owned his role. Now, that doesn't mean that there are not, you know, this is generally speaking, are there videos, is there evidence of Tony owning his role on a panel in an interview talking about how he was unmasked Michael and only unmasked Michael? Yes, but Tony is very consistent on being inconsistent. You know, it's very dependent on the audience he's talking to. And why does it bother me so much? Well, like I said, because I'm somebody who works in the business. I'm a professional voice actor. I've been in the business for over 20 years. And artistic integrity and owning your role is very important. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to be part of the It Chapter 1 marketing campaign. And I voiced a trailer for It Chapter 1. But I wasn't the only voice actor that did it. There's a number of... Uh, um, uh, variables as to how that can work. Sometimes it, it can it can depend on country. It can depend on language. It can it can be regional, local, city, national. There's many different variables at play that can determine you know how that all works. But it would be like me being interviewed as the it chapter one voiceover guy, you know, for the trailer. And I don't make any distinction or acknowledge my colleagues that work their fucking asses off to deliver awesome trailers as well. No, I just take all the credit. Well, they're not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. And again, I have direct knowledge that Tony has actually said that. This isn't hearsay from a fan, by the way. Okay? This isn't hearsay from a fan. This is direct knowledge that Tony has said. Hey, listen, if they're not going to say anything, I'm not going to say anything. He said that. He's misleading them. Do hardcore Halloween fans know he was in the movie for 4.5 seconds? Yes! But when you start to branch out into the horror, you know, landscape and then into the general movie going audience, they don't. And I just think it's the principle of it, right? Like I said in the last video. So that's always been my issue. And that ship's probably sailed unless he can humble himself because he's burned a lot of bridges. I'm telling you right now, again, I'm looking at this through a bit of a different lens. He's burned a lot of bridges. And until he can, that aren't with the fans. You know, but that's all he cares about because that's who feeds him, right? And I understand that. I mean, from a certain point of view, I'm like, I get it. But how disappointing because if you had just owned your role or maybe you start now, maybe maybe you can, you know, own up and apologize for the shit that you've caused and the things that you've said and, 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 and own this role like it's nobody's business. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he will continue to mislead audiences depending on his audience. You know, depending on who's speaking to him, depending on whether or not he feels he can get away with it. You know, and it's just always rubbed me the wrong way. And I'll give you an example. So this is Tony's Instagram page. Okay. Now let's scroll down here. Now here's a poster that is bang on, right? This is what we want to see, right? Tony Moran. Look at this. We got, that's Tony Moran. That is Tony Moran. Got the Halloween poster there. Awesome stuff. And there is Tony Moran, the man himself. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, come and meet 
Tony Moran. Pretty fucking cool stuff, right? The mat, the face of Michael Myers. These are the images that, and they're up, they're cool fucking images, dude. <laughs> they're fucking amazing. These are the images that should be on every advertisement of Tony, every banner of Tony when he's sitting at the at, at, at you know at the table and the banner behind him. That's the way it should be, right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, it's fucking cool. It's fucking cool stuff, right? Yeah, I think so. There's another one there. That's right, dude. There you are with John Carpenter. That's a fucking cool thing, man. If I had a picture like that with John Carpenter, I'd be fucking showing that off. Awesome stuff, right? Yeah, that's fucking right, man. Yes, yes, this is right. He's got it. Yes, yes, this is wrong. This is wrong. That's Nick Castle. That's wrong. That's Nick Castle. Now, did Tony make this? No, they didn't. But then now the question becomes, those who did make it, are they ignorant to Tony's role in the movie? And they just see Michael Myers. It's an iconic image of Michael Myers. That's all they see is Michael. So they throw it up there. Well, Tony's Michael. That's Michael. Pop it up there. Now, again, I know first world problems, right? Who cares, Dave? Who fucking cares? I don't care. I know the difference. I know. And you know what? Again, I, I acknowledge I'm looking at it through the lens of, you know, an artist and the principal. I, again, I'm looking at these things through a bit of a different lens. You, you, you can agree with me. You can not agree with me. I couldn't care less at the end of the day. This is my channel and I'm talking about it, <laughs> right? No, wouldn't have that there. Not right. That's Nick Castle. That's Nick Castle. Get that off there, right? Now, if we scroll down a bit further here, again, Michael Myers in the 1978 horror classic Halloween. Well, yes, it's true from a certain point of view. And then, of course, we have Nick Castle. This should say, unmasked Michael Myers in the 1978 horror classic Halloween. And then there should be that face of Tony Moran up there as he's getting his mask pulled off. That's cool. And you know something? Of course, Tony has seen this. He's seen it. It's on his fucking Instagram. He posted it. I wouldn't let that slide. I'd be the, but then again, that's also because I have integrity. And it's, and, and it's important to me. And I would call the convention or get in touch with people and say, hey, listen, you've got the wrong guy on there. Do you mind putting this and putting that? That's owning your role and being proud of it instead of being ashamed of it. It's, and, and, and sort of at any chance you can to, you know, uh, be disingenuous to the audience or, hey, if they're not going to say anything, I'm not going to say anything. That's what he said. That bothers me. And maybe it takes being a certain kind of person to understand that. Maybe it does. Maybe it does. I like his handlebar mustache, though. Looks good on him. We should go back to that. There we are there again. Let's listen to what he says here. Oh, wait a sec. I got to just... Uh, one second here, guys. Let me go up here and listen to what he says. Anyways, hey. Uh, I'm on Cameo app now. If you want me to book you just and give you a shout out, you can contact me at the Cameo. Look at his app. banner. This is Tony Moran. I played the original Michael Myers in a 1978 movie made by John Carpenter. You might have heard of it before. It's called Halloween. Again, misleading. Misleading, right? Everything about this is just, you know, it's not a big deal, Dave. We know. I know. Hey, listen, that's okay. You, you, can, you can turn away, man. You, you can stop watching this video right now. But this, it, it's these little things. Again, you know, it's the principle. This is why Tony gets himself into trouble. Because he doesn't own it. So therefore, because he doesn't own it, he's got to sit at conventions and feel awkward. You know, like, because he, know, because he doesn't own his role... He's always feels the need to exaggerate his role and he gets and he backs himself into corners and then he's and then he's telling stories that, you know, never happened or he's got to, you know, dance around and walk on eggshells because he doesn't want to disappoint anybody. When in reality, if you just fucking owned your role, nobody's disappointed, man. And he'd feel a weight lifted off his shoulders. You know, he would have felt the weight lifted off his shoulders. And listen, Tony, if your interviews are all, you know, 30 seconds long because you have no other Halloween stories to tell beyond the four hours you were there that one night and your audition for, then great. You know, you don't need to go, well, you know, we were all gathering the leaves together and we were all like this family. And he, he said shit like that. Tony said we were, we, we were gathering the leaves. You were, Tony, you were on set for one day. You weren't gathering shit. It was in the house. What are you talking about? 
and it gets him into trouble, right? Because then it just spirals and the stories get more crazy and outlandish. And then there's inconsistencies. You go and look back to what he said in 2008 and it doesn't match what he said in 2015. And then you go back when he looked like how he was when, you know, when he first started. And then that, that's weird how he, he's, 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 he's playing a game that he didn't need to play. And this is what I'm talking about. It's like a false identity, right? It's like, again, I'm going to the extreme to make a point. It's like he's living a double life. When if he had just fucking owned it, he wouldn't feel the need to, like the pressure that he must feel sometimes in certain situations, like the pressure he must felt being on a fucking panel with Kane Hodder and Gunnar Hansen and Robert Englund. Oh my God, talk, talk about being a fish out of fucking water. Like, holy shit. And the things he said, it's like, he's clearly like, <laughs> because those guys were the real deal. And Tony's like, yeah, I, I'm Michael. You know, that's the point I'm making, right? And that's why it's disappointing and it's frustrating. And that banner shouldn't be like that. Uh, there's another photo here somewhere. Where is it? Did I go buy it? It looks good in a suit. He's got a Scott Bale picture. Oh, he loathes Scott Bale. We know that. Where's that banner? Maybe I went by it. Yeah, there it is. There it is. So here we are, right? This is basically what we're, what we're looking at. <laughs> no, again, does it matter? No, but it's the principle. I just think, dude, like, fuck. I, get Nick Castle off there. You know, do, do these people here know that he wasn't? Because... He's likely, there's a high probability, a very high probability that if these two people here said, so what was it like to work on the set of Halloween? He'd stand there for 25 minutes telling them, well, you know, we did this and we did that. And I was, you know, I was moving like this. And, you know, I, you know, in, like, you know, in my head, I was thinking this and I was doing this and I was, you know, I was doing this and, you know, how Jamie was so amazing to work with and Donald Pleasance. Oh man, we used to sit there and talk and <laughs> because again, Hey, if they're not going to ask, I'm not going to say anything. I just, Tony, you know, just own your role, dude. Own your role. And uh, like I said, I mean, I don't think he's going to, obviously, but um, I, I have, I'm privy to certain knowledge and information that uh, about his behavior and the certain things that he said to certain people um, that I, I, I wish I could let you know, but uh, it's not my place to let you know. I, I, I would have to let the other people uh, do it. Um, so, um, you know, but you know, it is what it is. And, and, and that's why it's, it's bothered me. That's been really my big issue with him. And, and then of course, then there was this whole other thing that spiraled out of control, uh, last week and he's given an, an apology and I look at it and I go, well, you know, it's, it's typical PR. It's a, it's, it's, it's a PR move. It's a, it's damage control focused on the most important part of the people that would have been offended, which are not John Carpenter, uh, or Jamie Lee Curtis or these other individuals that I'm talking about. It would be, uh, the fans, because those are the people that pay to see him. And, you know, he, he doesn't want to stop going to conventions. Uh, he wants to, you know, and, and look, it, it, it's a classic PR damage control move. And does he mean it? I don't know. I'm not in his head. I don't really know. I don't really know. But if there's one thing we've learned about Tony Moran over the last 15 years or God, longer than that now. No, I guess he's, he started conventions 05, I think it was. Um, so yeah, 16 years is that he's very consistent on being inconsistent. And and the and the reason for that is because he's backed himself into a corner. I don't know, man. I mean, what do you think of the apology? Let me know. I mean, it doesn't I I couldn't care less because I'm not I wasn't offended by his his comments. I, I but I wanted to talk about it because obviously uh I do have a little bit of a a a beef with not a beef with him, but you know, I there, there's a certain part of the uh the Tony Moran sort of situation that I've always kind of uh had an issue with. So I find it fascinating. And like I said, it's drama. People love drama. Drama. Um but uh, thankfully, I, I don't do this kind of thing on my channel too often. So uh, uh, I'm allowed, like I said, one or two at the end of the day. Hey, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Let me know your thoughts on the apology. Let me know your thoughts. Have you met Tony Moran? What was your experience like with the man? <laughs> let
let me know. If you want to follow me on Facebook, you can at facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. That's where I tend to post in the meantime and in between time and I'm not posting here. All my links are in the description. Check them out until your heart's content. And when your heart is content, check them out again. All righty, folks. I will talk to you guys soon. Cheers. <laughs>